Coming up on today's show, a James Bond-style spy saga at Tesla, the new Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in goes further, and how big will the battery boom get? We will answer that before this show is over. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, the 20th of June edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Good show today, by the way. Positive show, loads of news coming in lots of stuff that i didn't even get time to put in uh i'll tweet it out though uh, to links and lots of battery and storage stuff for evs we'll get to that at the end of the program first of all though a slap on the wrists for me and a correction i can't begin without sorting out yesterday's mistake because i am an idiot uh, i need to learn which day of the week is Monday. On yesterday's show, I said that Norway were going to have an electric plane taking off next Monday. Think again, genius. It took off last Monday. Reuters reported that the transport minister Kettil Solvik Olsen and Dag Falk Peterson, who is the head of state run Avinor, which runs most of Norway's airports, took a few minutes' flight around Oslo Airport in the Alpha Electro G2 pure electric plane built by Pipistrel in Slovenia. Now, Norway uh, says the quote, Norway aims to be 100% electric by 2040 for all short haul flights. Avinor, which is responsible for the country's 44 airports, has bought the electric aircraft which was used on Monday. Not the one that will be used, the one that was used. Past tense, it's all done. It went very well. There'll be more electric flights soon. Sorry. Right, let's get on with the news today then. And Tesla said in an email on Sunday, three days ago, there was a small fire, a smouldering in an air filter in the welding area of the body line. The smouldering was extinguished in a matter of seconds. There were no injuries or significant equipment damage. Production's back online. The company didn't specify the location of the fire, which Reuters was unable to independently confirm. Then yesterday came the really big news about sabotage. This is the stuff of James Bond spy stories. Now, I presume that this kind of thing went on, like industrial spying and industrial sabotage and selling of information, but you don't really think it's going to happen. You kind of know it happens, but then when it does, it's kind of shocking. Well... Elon Musk had to send an email to all staff at Tesla, and I'm going to read you some uh, bits of it. I won't do the whole thing, but these are the quotes that stood out to me, and I quote, I was dismayed to learn this weekend about a Tesla employee who had conducted quite extensive and damaging sabotage to our operations. This included making direct code changes to the Tesla manufacturing operating system under false usernames and exporting large amounts of highly sensitive Tesla data to unknown third parties. Elon Musk continues, The full extent of his actions are not yet clear, but what he has admitted so far is pretty bad. His stated motivation is that he wanted a promotion that he did not receive. In the light of these actions, not promoting him was definitely the right move. Well, as you know, says Elon Musk, as you know, there are a long list of organizations that want Tesla to die. These include Wall Street short sellers who have already lost billions of dollars and stand to lose a lot more. There are oil and gas companies, the wealthiest industry in the world. They don't love the idea of Tesla advancing the progress of solar power and electric cars. Don't want to blow your mind, but rumour has it that those companies are sometimes not super nice. <laughs> then there are a multitude of big gas and diesel car company competitors. If they're willing to cheat about emissions, maybe they're willing to cheat in other ways. Please be extremely vigilant, particularly over the next few weeks, as we ramp up the production rate to 5,000 a week. This is when outside forces have the strongest motivation to stop us. Looking forward to having a great week with you as we charge up the super exciting ramp to 5,000 Model 3 cars per week. And that's where we'll stop the uh, selected quotes from Elon's email. It really is quite... There's one thing sabotaging because you're annoyed because you didn't get a promotion. There's another thing. Changing data and code, false usernames, exporting data, who knows where it's gone. Investigation's underway. The most important thing is that it won't derail neither of these things, the small fire or this, won't derail 
very derail Tesla's very quick and large uh, ramp up on the Model 3 production line. Third line now, uh, up and underway, and 5,000 Model 3s per week is just weeks away, according to Elon Musk. There is another element to this as well, by the way, and I don't know whether you whether you're a fan of reading sports autobiographies, and I like kind of reading books by leaders and there's a general trend when you read books by sports leaders famous sports coaches famous um, sports uh, kind of managers that have done great things won multiple championships all the trophies and there's there's this thing about making a them versus us so in the dressing room making it the rest of the world every team that you come up against are trying to steal you know your dream away from you, and what Elon has uh, has all I think always been really good at, but I think he's notched up a couple of notches recently. Is the them versus us, the kind of siege mentality? I think they call it, where everyone's out to get you. Come on, and it just brings it can bring teams closer together as you fight the opposition. Really interesting kind of uh, you know, psycho- psychology of it all. I'm sure there'll be more. Uh, tweets to see from Elon in the next few days. Well, moving on, and Auto Evolution is one of the few outlets today reporting on the updated Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. They say a significant update over the previous model year. The Outlander plug-in tops out at 84 miles an hour. Now, it's 135 Ks in all-electric mode. That's compared to the old versions, 78 or 125. Uh, Being a plug-in hybrid, it's best to drive it at lower speeds to maximize the efficiency of the drivetrain. In addition to the mechanical improvements, electric range itself has gone up 28 miles or 45 k's on the brand new WLTP test cycle here in Europe. The battery gets a bump to 19.5 kilowatt hours when you think that's about 10 kilowatt hours off something like the Hyundai Ioniq, which can go a long, long way very efficiently. Of course, this being the big SUV can only do 30 miles on a 20 kilowatt hour battery. Very heavy car. Not very um, aerodynamic, but still a very welcome bump in the range. Well, Renault's CEO, Carlos Ghosn, has a new incentive to promote development and sales of EVs. A significant part of his pay now depends on it, according to autonews.com. Under the new pay plan, a third, almost a third actually, of Ghosn's long-term incentives all depend on electric vehicle sales. So shareholder return, return, free cash flow and the alliance platform transition make up the rest. An increase of 5% over internal forecasts gets him the full 30% bonus. Uh, And if sales meet targets and don't go any further than those targets, he only gets 21% of it. Well, last year, Renault sold uh, 36,000 EVs, pure EVs, nearly all of them, by the way, is the Renault Zoe. The remainder would be the Kangoo van. It was an increase of about 10,000 from the previous year in 2016. And people talk about executive pay and certainly Elon Musk's executive pay. This is another example of this is someone who can't just sit in bed and earn bazillions of dollars. This is someone who, if he wants the big paycheck, has got to move Renault he gets a separate paycheck from Nissan, as far as I understand. But he, uh, the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance, if he moves them to electric cars and vehicles, well, then he gets his big payday, and that's a good thing for those who like EVs. Well, let's talk a little bit about batteries and storage for a second, because there's a few stories out today, and they all kind of came at the same time, and they all fit together actually. Batteries will attract 548 billion. Yeah with a B, 548 billion US dollars in investments by 2050. As costs fall and homes and businesses push to use clean energy, according to Mark Chediak, writing for Bloomberg.com. It's one of the conclusions of the New Energy Outlook released yesterday by the analysts at Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Well, batteries are going to become increasingly viable on the grid as demand for EVs spurs manufacturing of lithium-ion systems, driving down prices, and batteries will allow certainly the solar and wind to meet the full demand, even... When the sun's not shining and the wind isn't blowing, batteries uh, are going to be storing that energy from when the sun was shining. It helps to end the era of fossil fuel dominance on the grid by the uh, mid-century. 
BNEF said. Battery price is expected to fall to $70 a kilowatt hour by 2030 down 67% from today, according to this report which came out yesterday. Uh, BNEF ex expects 1,288 gigawatts of new batteries to be commissioned by 2050. Now, BNEF have excellent research, great data points, and they know what they're talking about. I will remind you, though, the last one I saw, if I'm wrong, correct me, I'll hold my hand up. <laughs> I nearly always am wrong. Uh, the last one I, I saw was them predicting 100 dollars per kilowatt hour at pack level by 2025 and if you remember last week or whenever it was the week before at the shareholder meeting elon musk saying we'll do a hundred dollars at sell level by the end of this year and we'll do a hundred dollars per kilowatt hour at pack level by 2020 so they were bnef were either conservative in their forecasts or didn't have the latest data from Tesla or Elon's being overly optimistic or there was another reason they just didn't have that intel uh, but interesting in that context uh, some interesting analysis there on batteries but they have been a little bit off but that is going on I don't want to criticize them because we know that Elon time when he says 2020 might not be 2020, or it might be, you don't know. Well, moving on, and our next story about charging and EVs is all to do with smart charging. And smart charging of your car could cut the cost of integration into the power grids by a huge amount of money. Here in the UK, they reckon a billion pounds uh, could be saved if we intelligently charge our cars and store energy when we should do. According to currentnews.co.uk, on top of the financial advantages to the grid operators, Vivid Economics, who did this study uh, for the WWF, also argued such action uh, in terms of smart charging benefits the customers because you save so much more money on your annual bill. Well, the report says a lot of really interesting things. If you want to go and read it, I'll put a link in the show notes. But this quote particularly stood out. The smartness of the transition to EVs will be the main factor determining how cost effective that transition is, not the speed of the transition. One of the big unknowns when it comes to modelling the grid, the power grid, and what it will be, what will be required of it in the future, is how fast vehicle to grid catches on. Now, people like Nissan are trying to push that on as quick as possible with the Chatamo connector, which is bi-directional, uh, trying to advance those early tests. But we'll see. The quicker it can be done, uh, the cheaper it will be to integ integrate EVs into the grid. And finally, uh, the topic of off-grid energy uh, is certainly one that likes is the topic of uh, conversation for a CEO of a company called Off-Grid Energy. His name's Danny Jones, and he yesterday was stressing the importance of battery storage and smart charging with electric vehicles. He said this, and I quote, The benefits of deploying storage systems are manifold and are absolutely necessary to prevent a delay in EV deployment because of the cost and lead-in times to reinforce the electric network at substations. Not to mention, they can start working right away with minimal installation time needed, end quote. So it's not surprising that the CEO of an off-grid energy storage company is talking about batteries, but what was interesting about that quote, I thought, was that he was saying it's so much cheaper to use battery storage than reinforce the grid. And that ties in with what Tesla have been saying. And Elon's been saying for a long, long time now, many years, and increasingly recently, he's been saying with the V3 superchargers, which should be coming towards the end of this year, they're going to have so much power that in order to save spending hundreds of thousands on upgrading the grid at all those places, you put in some solar and storage, and that acts as a buffer to the grid. So the grid is almost constantly charging the batteries, the power packs, I imagine they'll have, and then when you need to charge your Tesla at whatever the new rate's going to be, 250 kilowatts, they say, uh, around that, then you'll take that draw very quickly and deplete the batteries and then drive away. And if it's got some time, it'll then gradually store that back in the buffer in the battery. Again, it's a really big thing to think about in terms of saving money. Finally, Christchurch Airport is the first business in New Zealand and the South Island to sign up to this global initiative we've talked about before on the podcast called EV100, committing to transitioning its vehicle fleet to 100% 
zero emissions. Pure electric. Now, Christchurch Airport already has eight EV vehicles at 40% of their fleet is now electric. It also hosts the Yugo, an EV sharing system for the community in the area. EV100 is an initiative of the Climate Group, an international not-for-profit based in London, New Delhi and New York, and the mission is to accelerate climate action. EV100 members commit to becoming 100% electric at the very latest by 2030. Well done, New Zealanders, and well done, Christchurch Airport. Uh, looking at some of the comments over the last 24 hours that have been coming in from the community, uh, thank you so much to these. Hi to Simon Edmonds of electrichybridvehicletechnology.com. Uh, thank you very much for getting in touch, and we'll check out your site. Hi to the Sussex EV drivers as well, and new follower of uh, EV News Daily is someone who I've... Uh, I uh, admired? No, idolised. He's a legend. Uh, Professor Ray Wills in Perth, Australia. Please follow him on Twitter. Uh, and if you're ever having a moment of a little bit of doubt or just, you know, you see something that kind of gets you down about the oil industry, uh, go and look at his Twitter. Super optimistic. Really uh, just kind of re-energises you for a, a brilliant, optimistic future. So a few shouts there for some new members of the community. Uh, well, if you want, you can listen to every previous episode. That's all 155 previous episodes of the podcast. They're online and they are free and always will be on iTunes, on Google Play. On Spotify, which is cool, because if you listen to your music on Spotify, uh, you've got more content on there now in the shape of this podcast. Uh, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud on the blog, which is evnewsdaily.com. If you subscribe, you get them first and free. And automatically, if you can do me a really big favour, take two minutes to rate and review, even if it's like a little star rating, one star, five stars, doesn't matter, but it really makes a difference to how that algorithm works to promote the podcast on those platforms. Come and say hi on the socials, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and hopefully with some more good news, I'll catch you tomorrow.